Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Extend Script tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make a file type or name filter using Extend Script. So we're basically going to take any folder, feed it into a function, and using this function we can either filter things by their extension, in this case JSX, which if I run it will give me all of my JSX or script uh, files that are in this folder, or likewise I can say use this folder full of After Effects project files and since there's so many, I might want to filter it to find certain types. So let's say instead of filtering for an extension type, I wanted to filter for all of the ones that have been converted, which whenever you convert a project in After Effects, it gets converted text. So if I then use that as an argument instead, I'm going to get all of the files. So essentially we're gonna build this function from the ground up and we're just gonna put in one folder to it and figure out how we can filter out for many different file types and names. So the first thing we need is a folder to use to get all the files in. In my case, I'm just gonna start off using my videos folder in my computer. So I'll create a variable called folder and set this equal to a folder object. And then inside of the parentheses of our folder object, we're going to give it the path. And that path needs to be a string inside of double quotations. And I'm going to refer to the videos path, which you can use the relative uh, tilde icon here and then just the folder. So now I have my videos folder and if you're never sure if your folder exists what you can do is just say alert or right line uh, folder dot exists. You can see it says true which means it exists. If I change the name and it doesn't exist then it's going to give me false. Then we need to go ahead and just get all of the files that are inside of our folder. And the way we do that is very simple. We take our folder object which is the, again, our videos folder. And we're gonna say dot get files. And it's a method because it's gonna go through and get all of the files inside of here. So make sure you put parentheses. But what we want is to store these in a variable so we can access it later and mess around with it. So I'll just say files is equal to our folder dot get files. Now, if I go ahead and alert my files, you can see it's going to give us a list of every single file inside of the folder we gave it. In this case, all of these guys here. Now that we've gotten all of these files, we can really just go ahead and filter them, which we're going to set up a custom function. So what we're gonna say is our files variable is gonna be equal to basically itself, but what we want to do is have a function called filter files, and we're going to pass our files as an argument. And the second argument needs to be like a name or something. So in this case, we could just say .jsx. And now we need to actually define what this function is going to do. What we have is a variable that needs to be returned to equal our files, which in our case needs to be everything that's been filtered. So if I create a new function called filter files, which is the name of this guy here, the two arguments we need are our files. And then in this case, we have our .jsx. What we can just say is string, and this will indicate either a name or an extension in our scripts case. Then we need an empty array for all of our filtered files. So I'll just call a variable called filtered and set that equal to an empty array. And then of course, at the end of this, we're going to want to return all of our filtered files because we need to set our files equal to that. So that way, whenever we set in our original files, it's then going to filter them and return it back to the original variable. So now to actually get these things filtered, we're gonna create a for loop and we want to loop through our files. So I'll say var i is equal to zero for i is less than our files.length i++. So we're gonna loop through each individual item inside of here. And every time through, we want to check if it contains this string. The way we do that is have an if statement. We're gonna check if our files i, which indicates the current file we're on, so we're gonna say, let's say this is our current file. What do we want to check if um, it's filtered? So in this case, it needs to have our JSX or our string name. So we're gonna compare the name of our item. So we'll say files.name. And we want to compare the name to that string. The way we can compare it exactly is to say is equal to string, but this would require the string to be the exact name of the file. We don't want that. We want to just see if it's contained in it. There might be a bunch of other text inside of the file. So the way we do that is say dot index of, and this will do a search through the entire thing we're giving it for this string. And if the index returns a positive number or zero, we know that it is contained inside of our file name. 
The way we're going to do that then is going to say is not equal to negative one. Because if we get a negative one out of this index of, that means it's not contained and it thus does not exist. So the opposite of that is if it does exist and if it is contained. So essentially what we can then do is grab our filtered array and push our current files object into it. And now if we go back up outside of this function and say alert our files, let's do it before and after the filter to see the difference. If we go ahead and run it, we're first going to get this large list of files, which are all of the things in our videos folder. And then we're going to get the filtered files for in this case, our JSX extension. Let's say for example, we just wanted the After Effects projects. We could then run it again. And this time just get our test AEP and this other AEP project. And of course, this can now be applied to search for the names of things as well. If I have this folder here again, full of After Effects projects, I'll change my folder name to match it. And then what I'll do here is go ahead and change the name from a file extension to something like text like converted. Then if I run the script again, I'm going to get my large list of After Effects projects, as well as the converted list filtering with the string I gave it. But yeah, that's going to do it for this week's extend script tutorial. You can continue to apply this to other types of extensions, file names, and even expand the filters files function to do other things like check if it has an exact case, check for lowercase and uppercase cases, and many other things. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below if you enjoyed, and as always, hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.